Bitter heat in the summer. Brutal cold in the winter. Violent weather patterns occurring across the globe with more frequency and greater destructive capability than ever before. When we look at all these storm cells happening around the globe, it seems that the power and focus of these storms is almost being engineered. We can look at the paths of hurricanes and see that they're not random anymore. What if there's a more sinister explanation? Something man-made? Some say there's a top secret government device that can destroy our world. Capable of causing earthquakes, hurricanes, tsunamis. Conspiracy theorists say it can even be used to control your mind. Has the US government created the ultimate weapon of war? Something more devastating than a nuclear bomb? In 1983, I did radio tomography with 30 watts, looking for oil in the ground. I found 26 oil wells over a nine-state area, and 100% of the time was accurate with just 30 watts of power beaming straight into solid rock. HARP uses a billion watts beam straight into the ionosphere for experiments. Picture these strings on the piano as layers of the earth. Each one has its own frequency. What we used to do is beam radio waves into the ground and it would vibrate any strings that were present in the ground. We might get a sound back like and we'd say that's natural gas. We might get a sound back like and we say that's crude oil. We were able to identify each frequency we accomplished this with just 30 watts of radio power. If you do this with a billion watts, the vibrations are so violent that the entire piano would shake. In fact, the whole house would shake. In fact, the vibrations could be so severe underground that could even cause an earthquake. Last year, I confronted Heizo Takenaka the former Japanese finance minister, over why he handed over control of the Japanese financial system to a group of American and European oligarchs. He and his envoy told me that it was because Japan had been threatened by an earthquake machine. I did not believe it at the time. However, when I started exposing some of their doings, I was told by the Japanese security police that because of what I had said on places like Rents.com that Niigata City was going to be hit by an earthquake. Two days later, Japan's largest nuclear reactor was the exact epicenter of two earthquakes, both 6.8 in magnitude. And that was too much of a coincidence for me. So I started doing research and found out about HARP, H-A-A-R-P. And I realized that they really did know how to make earthquakes. And they do it by shooting a billion watt microwave into the ionosphere, which is the part of the atmosphere that has a lot of energy in it. That pushes the ionosphere up into outer space and then it rebounds. And the way it rebounds can cause earthquakes. Just like an opera singer can break a glass by singing at a certain level, or by dragging your fingernails on a blackboard, you feel a weird sensation. If they adjust the vibration for the rock underneath their target site, they can do that. The same machine can also heat up subterranean water to cause earthquakes. And remember, a billion watt microwave. What does microwave do to water? It heats it up. Now imagine if you put a billion watts into a tropical storm. You could make it much bigger and you could change the direction it flows in. You know how there's high pressure zones and low pressure zones. Well high is hot and low is cold. And the hot flows into the cold. And vice versa and there's more of the cold. So they can heat up an area and cause it to flow. 
into a next door area. In other words, these people are capable of creating the cyclone that hit Myanmar, the tsunami that hit Indonesia, and the earthquake that hit China. Now, after the earthquakes hit Niigata, a member of the Inagawa crime family, which is based in around the U.S. Yokosuka Air Base, and members of the Inagawa family have told me that their big boss is George Bush Sr. In other words, they work for Skull and Bones. They invited me to a so-called UFO gathering where they showed me the video of this blob. They told me it was a UFO, but it was obviously, to me anyway, a plasma uh, weapon or a ball of heat created by something like a billion watt microwave. And I predicted in my blog that there would be videos of lights found above China before the earthquake. And those videos then appeared on the internet after I predicted they would. And furthermore, a Taiwanese satellite detected a 50% drop in the ionosphere, in the amount of electric energy in the ionosphere above the earthquake zone. Now, a 50% drop would be exactly what would happen with HARP. It would push the ionosphere up, and then it would slam back down. So, it looks like the insane criminals who have taken over the U.S. government are killing people and threatening people with earthquake weapons. It doesn't look like it. I actually have some of the proof. The Strategic Defense Initiative The Star Wars program routinely falsified research data according to military sources at the time. Quote, We would lose hundreds of millions of dollars in Congress if we did not perform our tests successfully. We put a beacon with a certain frequency on the target vehicle. On the interceptor we had a receiver. The hit looked beautiful, so Congress did not ask questions. The very idea of Star Wars an umbrella that would shield America from Soviet nuclear warheads was itself a massive deception. No knowledgeable scientist thought for a minute such a shield was feasible, yet the Pentagon proceeded with this fraud and faked other tests in 1990 and 1991 after the Soviet threat had disappeared. Edward Teller was charged with falsifying test data on Super Excalibur, a nuclear-powered X-ray laser built by Lawrence Livermore Laboratory the project was canceled in 1992. All the talk about death rays and charged particle beams was little more than an elaborate smokescreen designed to hide the fact that the U.S. was developing a directed energy weapon that uses a high-power microwave pulse. Livermore Labs has been a central participant in SDI since 1982 when Edward Teller, the lab's founder, suggested SDI to Reagan. The father of the H-bomb received 40,000 shares of a laser research company that later defrauded its investors. Dr. Teller tried to sell Alaska on Project Plowshare, the use of six thermonuclear weapons to excavate a harbor at Cape Thompson, Alaska. In 1987, Teller returned to Alaska to propose the installation of a laser-like weapon system on the north slope of Alaska. The weapon system Teller was trying to sell was classified and not openly discussed, but the presentations indicated this Star Wars weapon was in fact HARP. In 1995, Congress killed funding for Star Wars, but HARP continues as the ultimate SDI radio frequency radiation weapon. The Reagan administration intensified the push into electromagnetic weapons development under Project Sleeping Beauty. A scientist working for the Army's Ballistic Defense Command complained to the House Government Operations Committee that as much as half of the entire STI budget had disappeared into classified projects. Suddenly there was a threat to this world from some other species from another planet outside in the universe. We'd forget all the little local differences that we have between our countries. Perhaps we need some outside universal threat to make us recognize this common bound. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat. 
High Frequency Active Auroral Research Project, HARP. 30 miles from Fairbanks, Alaska, is the real focus of anti-missile defense that SDI was purported to be, and much more. The public patent was titled, A Method and Apparatus for Altering a Region of the Earth's Atmosphere, Ionosphere, and Magnetosphere. Dr. Bernard Eastland, a physicist who holds a patent for the Fusion Torch, and also holds a dozen others related to HARP that were eventually purchased by E-Systems and Raytheon. Patent number 4686605 six, claims the following uses. Cause total disruption of all forms of communications over a very large portion of the Earth. Missile or aircraft destruction, deflection or confusion. Weather modification by altering solar absorption. Also, altering composition of the atmosphere. This patent was classified by the Navy under National Security Order in 1987, but other public patents exist for purposes of power beaming systems, artificial ionospheric mirror composed of a plasma layer, creation of artificial ionizing clouds above the Earth, defense system for discriminating between objects in space, nuclear-sized explosions without radiation, HARP is described as a research instrument for studying the ionosphere, an ionospheric heater, or IRI, of which many exist, but HARP is special. The ability to focus energy and the unprecedented amount in gigawatts, billions of watts, makes it literally millions of times more effective at heating the region about 120 miles above the Earth's surface. The atmosphere has most of its density below 30 miles altitude, the ionosphere is the very thin layer above that absorbs dangerous ultraviolet radiation and makes life possible on Earth. There is very little mixing normally between the two layers, but disturbances in the ionosphere translate to changes in weather, such as normally occurring sunspots and the solar wind. The main idea behind HARP is the ability to direct electrons along the naturally occurring magnetic field lines of the Earth and accelerate them to near the speed of light to form a protective shell of highly excited particles that not only block communications worldwide, but destroy missiles in their trajectory as they descend from space. The effects can be localized by punching a hole through the ionosphere to superheat an area 30 kilometers in diameter into a plasma shield. Any missile or aircraft would be destroyed that tried to fly through the plasma, which is the fourth state of matter. A hole in the ionosphere above an enemy country could kill by allowing solar radiation to strike the surface unhindered. Weather modification could also be used as an instrument of warfare by manipulating the electric jet and the jet streams that dictate climate. The publicly stated aim is C3, Command, Communication, and Control. The margin of victory in war is to block or intercept enemy communications and to secure your own. The signals in the ELF extremely low frequency range can be generated by HARP and heard anywhere in the world and are used for earth penetrating tomography basically finding enemy submarines and underground bases Dr. Richard Williams says the high energy experiments will generate the equivalent of the output of 10 to 100 large power generating stations and that quote tests of these kinds could cause irreversible damage according to Dr. Elizabeth Rauscher quote the ionosphere is prone to catalytic reactions, so if a small part is changed, a major change in the ionosphere can happen. HARP documents admit that a thousand-fold greater amounts of energy can be released in the ionosphere than injected. Stanford University experiments beaming radio waves into the magnetosphere detected the signals halfway around the world. Some were amplified a thousand times. We have with HARP is sort of the universal hammer for geophysical warfare. Nick Begich is the chief conspiracy theorist. So when did you know that that you were onto something? I think as soon as I saw the references to um, Tesla's work, and when I read Bernard Eastland's original patents, I realized that what we really had uh, here in Alaska was a prototype for a ground-based Star Wars weapon system. HARP is a non-classified project run not by Bernard Eastland, but by the U.S. Army and Navy. The official HARP story is told by one man, John Heckscher. Uh, it consists of several types of transmitting instruments and numerous scientific um, 
uh, instruments that study the, uh, the natural uh, ionosphere and uh, the ionosphere that has been uh, perturbed by the instruments that we are building. The ionosphere is a sea of electrically charged particles in the upper atmosphere, and the instrument is a powerful radio wave transmitter. Does it have any military applications? Um, the site itself is strictly a, a scientific research site. Um, perhaps the outcome of some of the science, perhaps some of the results, could be applied in a military to military systems. All right, y'all. Now in this harp video, I would I would say harp is kind of like one of those old conspiracies. It's one of those things that you first heard about when you first started looking up these kind of videos, because there's a bunch of information out on harp now that you could pretty much find with you know just a simple search of harp and you know, add in like weather control and you'll you'll find a bunch of different things to, you know, um, just get your knowledge up on what HARP actually is, you know, rather the government uses it as a weapon or, you know, rather they use it to control the weather, manipulate the weather, create storms, um, create hurricanes, you know, um, to fit whatever they have planned, whatever agenda they want to be served by, you know, creating storms, creating hurricanes, and, you know, just basically messing with the atmosphere in a whole, in a sense, playing God. Because I guess at the end of the day, that's all it is. It's just them attempting to, you know, control everything and play God. You know, um, Rather or not, you want to believe this stuff is actually happening if you want to believe in the fact that humans do have the power to control the weather and manipulate the weather. Then, you know, I don't know, I guess it's up to you, you know, um, if you think, you know, we have the tech or not to do so. But we definitely do. That's why I felt like this video was just, I guess, kind of important to bring back around because a lot of people aren't really thinking about it but we are noticing things are you know just different about how the weather is today and myself I catch myself you know noticing things and saying things to other people without really even like you know even with the way that I think I'll say certain things sometimes and still not catch the fact that the reason I'm saying that is because it's not normal anymore and I'm speaking on the weather. You know, it just doesn't feel natural anymore. Storms don't look nor feel the same. They don't sound the same. You know, like thunderstorms used to be more authentic when I grew up, when I was growing up. Like they used to, it used to really lightning. It used to really thunder. Like the thunder used to be really loud booms. The lightning used to be really bright and consistent. The, you know, the rain, the rain was, it, it was different. I don't know. It, I, I guess back then it was like real thunderstorms, you know, like mother nature really pouring the earth. These days it feels more artificial. It feels like these, some storms are pumped into the atmosphere. You know, the, the, the thunder doesn't sound the same all the time. It, it just doesn't feel natural. It doesn't feel like this came from Mother Nature is what I'm trying to say. It's hard to just pick out what's different. You just have to feel it. Even the sun looks different. Because we're basically, you know, they're basically poking all kind of holes in the atmosphere. heating up the atmosphere constantly, constantly with basically, you know, it's, it's not heat from the sun. It's artificial heat in a sense. So you can only imagine what they're actually doing to the natural flow, the natural weather patterns of, you know, 
what we live on of basically mother nature they're they're just messing up the natural pattern of mother nature so that's why things don't seem to me i'm just saying this is my opinion and of course i want y'all to let me know how y'all feel about the weather where you stay do the clouds look real does the sun look more white than orange reddish like how does things look to you does the heat feel more dry you know, which I guess, you know, you could always add that to being just living in humid places because I do live um, in the state of Georgia and it's very humid here. So, you know, I guess that's kind of always been the same. But my my big points about the weather is thunderstorms and the sun. And I, and I guess I guess in a sense, the heat does does play a factor because the 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 way that the sun feels on your skin now it more burns your skin you know like it, it's different from being in the sun all day and like you catching sunburn on the beach or at the pool or some shit like that you know which obviously most really melanated people don't catch sunburns but i'm just saying the sun is different now the way it touches your skin it's different it's not like it's just not how it used to be. Again, it's one of those things that I can't just pick out what exactly makes it different, but you just have to feel it. And I'll give you all a little quick story. I had a friend I was with in a car one time. And this person, they didn't know anything about, I'm not going to say they didn't know anything. They just didn't care to look up conspiracies and wonder why the earth is the way it is or why the sun is the way it is but one day we were in the car and they just happened to say that the sun you know this was them noticing that the sun looked you know it looked white and it felt it felt like it was burning their skin and they, and they didn't say they didn't say it because they were hot mind you it was it was probably like five six o'clock in the evening so it wasn't that hot outside but they noticed something about the sun that you know, only someone who actually pays attention to this kind of stuff would have noticed and brought up to someone else because they're actually paying attention to it. This person, they just said it because it was something that they naturally noticed, but not really knowing that what they thought they noticed about the sun was actually true because it has changed. But they weren't thinking about it in that way. They were just saying something. So it goes to show you that people who don't even be on this kind of stuff we be on they're noticing it too but they're just not tying it to what we're tying it to and so it could go two different ways it could go back to weather manipulation being behind the changes or it could just go down to the fact that you know this is a natural cycle and this earth and this you know, this cycle that we're going through as humans, this civilization that we're living through, maybe this is just a time where everything, you know, comes back around to the end, basically. And this is the transition that, you know, the earth goes through. You know, who knows that there's there's many different lanes you could go down to why the weather patterns and why the sun and why certain things are different the way, you know, these days and how they used to be, you know, but we do know man has a lot of, um, has a lot of blame in this, you know, um, so we can definitely, you know, basically <laughs> we, 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 we can, we can say harp is a good portion of the blame, you know what I'm saying? So, um, uh, amongst other things, you know, so, um, I don't want to drag this on too long, you know, because we, we could actually definitely make this a part two, um, as well. So y'all please, you know, let me know in the comments. Um, give me your thoughts about the video, about harp, about weather control. And um, and yeah, just kind of like give me your own experiences if you've experienced anything with weather being unnatural to what you've known it to be in the past. All right, y'all. So, you know, man, I hope y'all enjoyed that video. Like I said, let me know if y'all want a part two out of this one or not. And y'all already know what's going on, man. Look, it's Black Balloon. I'm feeling good, man. I'm feeling real good. I got so much content coming for y'all, man. Y'all already know what's going on. I really appreciate y'all. All right. With that being said, I'm going to go ahead and end this video. It's Black Balloon, and I'm going to see y'all soon. I'm out.